Uh, additionally, uh, what I would do in this case is I, I'll follow this to uh, biopsy, um, demonstrate uh, quickly our approach to biopsy. I think one of the things uh, initially very important in performing breast MRI biopsy is to position the patient correctly. Um, my personal bias is this is not something that the technologist should do. Uh, in our institution, the technologists get the, get the patient in place and laying on the table, but then I always uh, position the grids uh, as well as the breast tissue. You're the one who knows best where the lesion is, you know the uh, issues at hand insofar as getting appropriate compression to uh, facilitate your biopsy. If there's an anterior lesion, you either position the patient appropriately or if you have grids that are mobile, you can position the grids to more optimally uh, compress the anterior breast versus the more posterior breast. This is a, somewhat of a mid lesion. It's positioned uh, centrally within the breast as we um, cross-reference. You can see it's pretty much centrally located within the breast. Uh, so in this case, uh, you could do either a medial or a lateral approach. Uh, in this uh, particular instance, we chose a lateral approach. So once we have the patient positioned, uh, we do uh, a very quick uh, localizer scan just to find the uh, fiducials. Um, perform an auto uh, grid detection which overlays the grid and then at that point we proceed to the biopsy. Um, what we uh, perform initially is uh, we, we zero in on the area of the, bio, of the lesion with a fairly thin slab. Uh, this keeps our imaging times uh, at minimal uh, so we can perform the biopsy very quickly uh, and then we display this uh, in a four-on-one display as you can see here in the top left we have our subtraction uh, images and then the series uh, of pre, post and post obturator and subsequently post biopsy automatically get laid on one another. So you can see here is our lesion in this area. Uh, there you see the pre-contrast, post-contrast uh, acquisitions also see it in the axial projection. Um, so as we, uh, we targeted our lesion in this area and simply add a target and then we're able to see where to place the needle uh, both within the block as well as within the grid system. Uh, having done that, uh, the, the next step as you uh, insert the trocar is uh, place that in this case, uh, there was a fair amount of resistance, uh, and so I advanced the trocar slightly greater than the 28 millimeters uh, initially indicated, um, primarily for fear of tenting of the fibroglandular tissue. There, now you see the uh, obturator in place, again here, and if you watch in the axial plane, you can see pre to post obturator, you can see that there is some tenting of the tissue if we have it centered on the tissue before versus after, you can see it has in fact moved. Uh, I did advance it uh, uh, slightly more than indicated and it, now the obturator is centered pretty much on the lesion. At this point we performed a series of biopsies. You can see initially a cavity uh, developed somewhat uh, proximal to this. Uh, this is something not uncommon when you have an isolated lesion. Uh, particularly when it turns out to be malignant sitting within fat, even though your sample tray may be centered appropriately, uh, you'll see uh, fat getting withdrawn just because of the density of the lesion. Uh, at this point, we did a half sample, so we were only sampling from the obturator distally, and then you can see now there is a cavity resecting the lesion uh, in both projections. Uh, this did turn out to be an invasive uh, ductal carcinoma. Our next patient will be continuing uh, pretty much in the theme of high-risk screening. This was a 35-year-old female who had a history of premenopausal breast cancer in her mother. Uh, she had begun mammography 10 years earlier than the diagnosis of her breast cancer, but had recently, um, about two years ago, started uh, high-risk screen, screening uh, with uh, breast MRI as well. Her mammograms show heterogeneously dense tissue with multiple masses bilaterally. Um, there's some scattered benign calcifications, but no malignant appearing calcifications are uh, apparent. As we go to the breast MRI, I thought that it would be good to bring in uh, sort of another extreme. You know, we've been showing cases that have fairly isolated lesions, not too difficult to find. Uh, 
I thought it only fair, though, to show the real world, and sometimes when you're faced with a case like this, uh, when we look at your one-minute subtraction MIP, again, the value of getting an overview, but this, this is going to be a difficult case. You know right off the bat there's tremendous enhancement diffusely of the fibroglandular tissue, multiple nodules, uh, symmetrically, however, within the breast. Um, first thing I would look at when I see a case like this is make sure that my scheduling department did their job and that this young woman is in the correct phase of her cycle. If, since she is a high-risk screen, she should be around day 10, day 7 to 10 of her cycle. Uh, additionally, uh, in a different scenario, I'd want to make sure they weren't on hormone replacement. Uh, neither of these were true in this case, and so then we're just faced with this uh, really difficult uh, um, appearance uh, of the breasts. Uh, the best way to approach this is, you know, you basically have to analyze each lesion as best you can. Um, look for something differentiating from the rest of the nodules. When you see this diffuse multinodular enhancement, it, you know, much like mammography, is often going to wind up being benign, uh, but you obviously can't make that assumption, so you do have to analyze each, each uh, lesion as you go through. Um, the other thing, as you can see here on the MIP, uh, there's tremendous cystic changes within the breast. If we uh, just on the fly create a, um, a 3D MIP, you can see the extensive cystic changes throughout the breast. Uh, bilaterally, that accounts for the masses we've seen by mammography, uh, but also, you know, lends us to believe that this is going to be certainly some degree of fibrocystic change, but we still have the responsibility of trying to look for that nodule that's slightly different. Um, as we go back then to the actual uh, slice information, I won't go through my uh, organized approach, just trying to get uh, more cases uh, um, reviewed here as we go from the pre to post contrast. Um, looking at these, uh, the lesions, although several of them some were larger, there are multiple of them. They're bilaterally located. Uh, we'll change the uh, enhancement threshold a little bit here just to decrease some of the background noise trying to find uh, a more dominant lesion. But as we pan through, they're, they're fairly uniform, uh, but it's not just micronodular. These aren't foci. There's actually, you know, scattered macronodular enhancements you can see. But in general, relatively uh, uniform. Uh, one nodule is a little bit more prominent here. So we focus in on this. Um, still smoothly circumscribed. Um, it does demonstrate some washout kinetics. If we cross-reference this with our other pulse sequences, you can see that on the stir acquisition, this is relatively T2 hyperintense, uh, as well as on the Fastman Echo T2 acquisition is T2 hyperintense. So this is, uh, I'm feeling pretty good about this being likely a fibroadenoma. Um, and as we review this, we didn't see any dominant lesion that stood out. Um, but in this instance, I, I think you pretty much have to communicate that the, the degree of background enhancement significantly is going to limit the sensitivity of this, uh, of this patient's exam. Um, depending on the mammogram, we will uh, sometimes recommend a six-month follow-up mammogram. And really the purpose of that is to make sure that everything appears stable. And then you have to rely on a one-year follow-up MRI to determine, you know, has anything changed, at which point then you might uh, be led to uh, intervene and perform a biopsy. But this is a very difficult case. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Uh, but the symmetry of enhancement, the, the bilaterality, uh, is, is generally speaking for benign, but I, I use this as an example to illustrate the point of sometimes you have to you know, note that the, your sensitivity has been hindered and rely on a follow-up to look for stability. Uh, this patient has been followed since 2007 now, and so far uh, everything has remained stable. Our next case is a patient uh, in her late 40s who presented for a routine screening mammogram. Uh, on the mammogram, which I just show a couple of magnification views, there was a uh, cluster of abnormal microcalcifications uh, within the breast. Uh, there were no additional significant calcifications noted, although uh, the patient did have moderately uh, dense tissue. Uh, this patient underwent a stereotactic biopsy, which did reveal ductal carcinoma in situ, and came to MRI to assess extended disease prior to her surgery. Uh, here following, uh, again, with our initial uh, overview on the one-minute subtraction MIPS, a moderate degree of background uh, parenchymal enhancement, fairly symmetrically, but clearly there's a significant amount of asymmetric, um, abnormal mass-like and non-mass-like enhancement within the right breast. 
Um, obviously a very concerning appearance in this uh, patient. Uh, again, just looking uh, through, we won't create the significant images just for the sake of time, but looking at these images, there's clearly multifocal uh, tumor here, um, likely areas of uh, invasive, but then this non-mass-like intervening enhancement, uh, very commonly associated with uh, DCIS uh, uh, and often relatively high grade. There's a solitary focus uh, remote in the lower outer quadrant of the left of the right breast, and the right uh, the left breast demonstrates pretty much this normal uh, parenchymal enhancement. Uh, one nodule here, which we did analyze, uh, circumscribed, demonstrates non-enhancing internal septations and T2 hyperintense signal uh, compatible with a lymph with a uh, fibroadenoma. To look at this in more detail, I'll switch to the 2D images. And again, beginning uh, medially and stepping through sequentially. You can see a uh, spiculated mass here with rim enhancement, uh, some degree of plateau kinetics, uh, another discrete uh, mass here, uh, a little bit lobulated, not clearly spicular, spiculated in its margins. Uh, here, a, a very classic appearance for uh, cancer. Uh, just for the sake of um, a further evaluation, if we uh, cross-correlate these, uh, here you can see on the delayed exam, uh, this uh, abnormal enhancement with uh, the delay, you've lost some of the morphology as the uh, uh, lesion has started to wash out and the margins become less distinct. Uh, this is clearly uh, not T2 hyper intense, uh, not that that would matter given this morphology and the enhancement characteristics of this. Uh, in this instance, um, you, could, you would obviously segment uh, uh, some of these lesions. Um, in this case, uh, I will just segment two of the more dominant lesions. Um, and this uh, obviously for uh, a virus classification would be a BIRADS-5. Um, but in this case, you can see a tremendous benefit from this patient's uh, MRI uh, showing extensive disease that was not at all suspected previously. Uh, the question comes up is uh, what, what about this nodule that's in a remote quadrant here? Uh, it has fairly non-aggressive enhancement characteristics. Uh, Cross-referencing this, uh, this is an area that's hyperintense and T2 signal. Um, I can't make out lymph node morphology. Uh, and this would be a, a difficult call here on this uh, delayed acquisition. Uh, lesion looks somewhat irregular in its margins. Uh, if this patient is planning on uh, breast conservation, uh, then I think this would warrant uh, an MRI-guided biopsy to make sure you weren't dealing with multicentric disease. Uh, in this patient's case, uh, she did uh, elect uh, to proceed with uh, uh, mastectomy, um, which did demonstrate uh, multi-centric uh, uh, invasive ductal carcinoma with large areas of intervening uh, uh, DCIS. Our next patient is a 61-year-old female who presented to her surgeon with uh, breast pain and swelling and redness and uh, clinical uh, findings compatible with inflammatory breast cancer. Her mammogram also supported this, showing asymmetric uh, increased density of the tissue in the right breast as well as skin thickening. Uh, she came to MRI for um, pre-chemo evaluation, uh, and uh, so I wanted to take an opportunity to show these images because it shows some of the classic findings of inflammatory breast cancer. Here is the uh, breast MRI exam, uh, again from the initial one minute subtraction MIPS, uh, a normal appearing left breast. Obviously, early phase imaging with a prominent vascular enhancement and clearly diffuse abnormality throughout the right breast. Uh, in this case, um, with clinical inflammatory cancer, this does demonstrate actually an underlying discrete mass. As we look through with the thin MIPS, you can see this large uh, spiculated uh, area, somewhat mass-like with a large surrounding volume of non-mass-like abnormal enhancement uh, within the right breast.
The other thing to notice, though, is the, the thickening of the skin as well as enhancement of the skin. Uh, let's go to our uh, detailed imaging with the actual slices and on our subtractions. And if you look, you can see this large area of non-mass-like and more uh, overtly mass-like enhancement uh, underlying this case of inflammatory cancer. But then if you look carefully, you see this abnormal, somewhat irregular and um, interrupted enhancement of the skin. Uh, this is a characteristic uh, finding with uh, inflammatory breast cancer. Um, not real commonly uh, seen. I've had cases of inflammatory breast cancer that didn't necessarily show this, but when you do see this, you can be pretty confident of the diagnosis. You can see on the STIR imaging the pronounced uh, edema of the breast, uh, displaying this in a uh, MIP representation. You can see the pronounced uh, asymmetric edema throughout the right breast. Uh, and this patient did undergo uh, percutaneous biopsy confirming invasive ductal cancer. Uh, biopsy of the skin did also, however, confirm uh, the uh, angiolymphatic invasion of the skin. Uh, in this patient, just to show an example, there's nothing subtle about this, but as we look at our T1 images, you can see this uh, pronounced uh, pathologic uh, lymphadenopathy of the uh, level one axillary lymph nodes of the right breast. So this is just a nice example. You can see here the speculated mass of the characteristic findings of inflammatory uh, breast cancer. Well, that's all the time we have today. Uh, in this fairly brief period of time, I hope I've been able to give some overview on the topic of breast MRI, as well as uh, demonstrate some individual features on establishing a breast MRI program, as well as an approach to actual case interpretation. I hope you found something useful, and I thank you for your time. And I thank